I already covered how the solar and lunar eclipses work in the flat earth, and I noticed how Justin Peters is absolutely clueless on the subject. He writes, how does the flat earth model generally accepted as a flat disk with the North Pole at the center, Antarctica ringing the perimeter and the sun and moon close overhead circling around each other account for a solar eclipse like we are about to witness today, much less predict the next one. Can any flat earther give any cogent model below our pictures from the flat earth proponents depicting how day and night occur on a flat earth? And these don't work either. Flat earthers, what is your model for explaining and predicting eclipses? And just for reference, here is a screenshot of a video I made on Justin Peters pushing the satanic ball earth, the complete lie, and disregarding the biblical flat earth. As it states in the Bible, the firmament, the solid structure, conceived as a vast solid dome. And they have always put the truth in plain sight when it comes to God's created flat earth. Here you see this collage I put together several years ago. And before getting into the imagery, take a look here at the 1611 King James Version of the Bible from Romans 14.17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drinks but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you have the kingdom, that's where kingdom comes from, etymology, and of course the kingdom, which they imploded years ago in Seattle, Washington, in Toronto, Canada, the sky dome. And you obviously see the sun within the D of the dome. Here you have Furman Avenue in Los Angeles, meaning the angels when you translate los angeles to english again the angels under god's firmament and this is Furman avenue right in front of this church getting back to the collage itself once again you have the astro dome which is basically the star dome you see the rainbow seats underneath the glass ceiling this is all biblical truth in plain sight and in my video that i made three weeks ago i showed justin peters trying hard very hard to debunk God's flat earth. I showed all the symbolism in plain sight. Here you see the fake phony ball earth, Jupiter, all the books on the bookshelf in the back. And this is supposedly to equate intelligence, someone being well read. This is a psychological aspect a lot of these individuals do, a lot of deceivers do. Just like his guest, as you see here, supposed Dr. Danny Faulkner, and the same psychological aspect with all the books obviously you have to have it set up with all the books in the background to demonstrate to the viewers oh i'm well read i'm so intelligent again this is another psychological aspect that these deceivers do clear as day and by the way obviously you see the all-seeing eye within the pyramid i pointed this out before with a triangle or pyramid you have your 60 degree angles the three angles of 60 degrees, you remove the zero. In numerology, the zeros mean nothing. So you have your 666 in plain sight. And it's clear as day. And obviously, when it comes to the one-eyed Antichrist, as I mentioned many times in the past, from Zechariah 11.17, the one-eyed Antichrist, his right eye shall be totally blinded. That's why they have the single eye, obviously, within the pyramid. Obviously, you can have two eyes, but they only show the one. This is all regards to the 666 agenda and the Antichrist himself. So make no mistake about it, these deceivers through signs and symbols tell you who they're working for. And that gets into this Bible verse as I shown before as well when it comes to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 through 15. Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. His servants also disguise themselves as service of righteousness. And that completely truly describes Justin Peters. And his very stupid and ignorant claim about eclipses and how flat earthers can explain how eclipses work on a flat earth. If he had a brain in his head and did any kind of research, he'll know this. Going back, way back in time, the ancient Mesopotamians, the Chinese, and the Mayans, over 3,000 years ago, at least, were predicting solar eclipses. And here's a little bit of a close-up from the Harvard University website talking about solar eclipses being recorded way back in 976 BC. Now here is the major problem. You have Aristotle, the one that conceived the so-called globe. 
And here is the details regarding Aristotle himself and the shape of the earth. He was born in 384 BC, and interesting enough, supposedly passed away 322, of course, skull and bones. I find that pretty interesting. But all has to do with the lunar eclipse. We'll get into that in a second. But the major aspect is this complete imbecile, Justin Peters, is asking flat earthers to explain solar eclipses on a flat earth when clearly they were predicting solar eclipses and observing solar eclipses well before the whole entire globe was conceived hundreds of years prior. Which again goes to show Justin Peters is clueless. He needs to stay away from talking about flat earth. He has no idea what he's talking about. And that gets back to Aristotle and his claim of the spherical earth. And it's based upon the supposed shadows with the lunar eclipse. I've covered this in my previous video. And here is from 2011, a lunar eclipse, where the top part, once again, is shadowed. And supposedly during a lunar eclipse, it's caused by the ball earth. So what's going on here? Why isn't the bottom portion of the moon eclipse only the top portion and just a little bit of a close-up of the lunar eclipse and the sun and moon are both above the horizon and science can't explain this and again this is obviously explaining a lunar eclipse where the so-called ball earth is blocking the sun from the moon to create the eclipse unlike a solar eclipse where the moon is blocking the sun so let's not confuse the two and as I've demonstrated in previous videos, how the solar eclipse works on the flat earth model, as you see the circling sun, just like the Bible states, the sun works as a circuit. You stop right there. And this is the exact position where the moon is blocking the sun to create the total eclipse in this region of the United States. Like I said before, it has to be precise in the precise location for this to happen. This doesn't happen often, obviously. And for those that deny the biblical local sun under the firmament, take a look at this footage out at sea where you see daytime. And as the camera pans to the right, what do you see here? Nighttime. Complete darkness. And there's the moon in plain sight. And definitely, I should mention, as the Bible states, the moon is the lesser light to rule the night. Clear as day, it is giving off its own light, not a reflection from the sun, as science states. Let's play the video a little bit more as the camera is going to pan to the left. And you're going to see daylight, obviously, for all to see, clear as day. And that gets back to the initial model I showed. And of course, people are going to say this is just a model. But again, as I demonstrated, with this footage, day and night at the same time. So that model that I showed matches our reality, which is science is all about. It has to match our reality. The school textbook states something, it doesn't match our reality, you could throw it out the window. And as I covered in my previous video with the solar eclipse, the way it works, you see this very narrow path. If the Sun was 92 million miles away. You wouldn't have this narrow path. Again, you would have the whole United States in much more completely eclipsed. And obviously that is not happening. Just as I've shown here with the whole entire model of the solar eclipse and the moon passing in front. Again, to create this band that's happening in this region here. Now there's some that's saying it's not the actual moon. Here's actual footage of the solar eclipse from Mission Viejo the day of, of April 8th, 2024. And take a look here, as you're going to see here, with the moon passing in front of the sun. Actually, what's happening here, the moon appearing to move left to right, what's happening is the sun's moving faster. It's like you're on the freeway and you see a car passing another car, just because it appears the moon's going to the left. Actually, the sun is moving faster to the right to give the impression the moon's moving to the left when it's not. It's actually the sun which moves faster. This clearly demonstrates how this eclipse is by the moon itself. Okay, there's, there's flat earthers out there claiming it's not the moon. 
If that's the case, show me where the moon is in the sky if it's not in front of the sun. Now let's take a look at the moon through a P1000 digital camera. There are flat earthers that claim the moon is semi-transparent. Obviously at times it is. Sometimes it's solid. Let's not make the claim just one way. The moon is a mystery. I believe at times it's solid and sometimes semi-transparent. And obviously we see craters on the moon's surface itself. More than likely obviously created during creation. Because there's no new craters since the beginning of recorded history. Again, that gets back to this footage uh, as I've shown where the moon is eclipsing the sun and it's solid at this point. Only God has the answers of how and why this is happening. And for people to make the claim, again, of semi-transparent, doesn't happen all the time. Clearly, it's solid at times. So I just want to be very clear about this. Because obviously, if the moon was always semi-transparent, we should see stars through the moon at all times when we look through a P900 or P1000 digital camera. And that does not happen. Now... And this claim by the Globers needs to be thoroughly debunked because there's still people talking about ships going over the so-called curve of the Earth. As you see here, this chief engineer at Solstad offshore, Andrew Forrest, and his very easily debunked claim of the globe, as he states here, if you live by the sea, you can verify the curvature of the Earth very easily by simply watching the approach of large ships as they come into port. Completely ridiculous and easily debunked. Let's take a look here at this cargo ship at sea and you see it fully as you pan out it's going to completely disappear out of view. This 100% proves that the horizon is not physical. It's based on how far we can see with our eyes. Obviously the P900 and P1000 are an extension of our eyes. Now let's play this clip a little bit more. I'm going to zoom right back in. No ship, no cargo ship. Then all of a sudden, what do you see? Again, people are blinded by science in society right there. Obviously, clear as day. And this is someone, as I shown earlier, this chief engineer, completely blinded by science, just like I showed here as well when it comes to Justin Peters. And again, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again and again. A complete imbecile has no place in talking or discussing flat earth. He doesn't have a clue. He needs to step aside because he's the blind leading the blind, pushing the satanic ball earth. According to science, this ball earth came from nothing, came from an explosion from nothing. And the biblical flat earth with a dome proves that there's a crater. And obviously the globe once again promotes evolution, which doesn't match the Bible. Can I talk to the pilot, please? He's right here. You're the pilot? Hi. How yeah. long have you been flying for? Uh, like for Delta, 21 years, but maybe like 30 something. I want to know, um, because they say the pilots know a lot. Do you uh -huh. think the Earth is flat or not? <laughs> I know it's flat. You know it's flat? <laughs> How long have you been flying for, you said? Over 30 years. Why are you sitting in your chair today? Does gravity pull you to the floor? No. There is no such thing as gravitational pull. We lied to you. First of all, we are born scientists. When we're born, we wonder what's out there. We begin to wonder about the sun, life, the stars, uh, what makes the oceans, the weather. We're born scientists. And then something happens. When we hit the danger years, the danger years of junior high school and high school, that's when it's literally crushed out of us. Those are the worst. Every little flower of curiosity, said Einstein, is crushed by society itself. Because we have to learn all these facts, figures, memorization, we think that memorization is science. And that's not true at all. In science, we always say that you make observations, you have a theory, you go make more observations, and it's a very, very tedious process. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field un uh, uses the so-called scientific method. In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. Tell us what emotions you had. 
Well, when I was standing outside that capsule, it was a very quiet and peaceful moment, you know. At that moment, you look at the world, and it looks very fragile. You could see the curvature of the Earth. You've been lied to by textbooks, and that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name? Felix! Felix Bumgardner, uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. <laughs> now, you know, I, I don't, it's fine. He wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide-angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. Right. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. You could see the curvature of the Earth. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. It is, you just don't. That stuff is flat. That stuff is flat. That stuff is flat. You've been lied to by textbooks. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. I mean, I, I, I could have said the world was flat. You know what I think? I think you accidentally told the truth. Through your career and your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. The, the mystery of science fiction is what I'm talking about. Science and science fiction are essentially the same. Blinding me with science? Old John, chapter 9, verse 25. Whereas once I was blind, now I can see. Now I can see. Now I can see.